Uh, Madam President, I want to thank my colleagues and I want to thank the administration for the response to the devastating floods that we experienced in Vermont this August. Today I have to have, I'm here to make a report and also to make a plea that we replenish the disaster relief fund in the FEMA budget so that the work that needs to be done in Vermont to help our farms, our families, our communities recover will continue to be done. Uh, today, I had a telephone conversation uh, that was set up by Senator Sanders. Our governor was on the phone and my colleague, uh, Congresswoman Ballot, was on the phone uh, with the FEMA administrator. And she has been doing a tremendous job. She's been extremely responsive. We're all grateful to her for that work. But what she did make very clear is that it is absolutely essential to the well-being of FEMA's capacity to continue to provide response that this budget be supplemented and the FEMA supplemental be passed. So I urge my colleagues, and again, I want to thank them on both sides of the aisle who've approached me and said, Peter, your folks have been hammered by a natural disaster, and we will be here to help you. But there's a long way from where we are with the precarious activities that are going on in the House. First of all, we're pretty proud of the response. President Coolidge, who was our president in 1927, uh, but it was a Vermonter from Plymouth, Vermont, uh, toured the flood damage when we had a catastrophic flood in 1927. And he nicknamed the state a brave little state. And that's who we are in Vermont. And his appellation of that term was his recognition of the indomitable spirit that our people in Vermont have to pick themselves up, to pull together, and to rebuild. Nearly a century later, of course, this August, we experienced another devastating flood. The, what we experienced in July and August was nothing short of catastrophic. Towns across the state were devastated with homes and businesses and farms completely destroyed. You can see here, this is our capital, Montpelier. And that was right after the rains that were parked over Montpelier and just would never leave. It's dry now. But these businesses along Main Street have not reopened. Some have, many haven't, and to some extent, their decision is will the FEMA aid be there so that they have a chance to open those doors and make up for the lost income and hopefully revive that downtown. Damage estimates are still coming in, but currently it's totaling in the hundreds of millions of dollars for our very, very small state. The impact on Vermont's farmland is stunning. This is Paul Mazza's farm. And he was, that farm, vegetables, row crops, that was under enormous amounts of water with the, when, when the water receded, the crops, the berries, uh, the pick your own crops that are so not only important to families and nutrition, but was a, revered activity by families in Vermont to come to Paul's farm and pick their berries with their kids. He's not going to be able to harvest any uh, berries this year. By the way, in terms of the um, damage that was done, the, the USDA's Natural Resource Conservation Service estimates anywhere between 145,000 and 686,000 acres of agricultural land in the state was impacted by flooding. The Conant Riverside Farm, which I visited along uh, with the governor and Senator Sanders, half their hay and corn was impacted by the flooding. Silt from the flood covered corn used to feed their crowd, cows. There's real question about how they're gonna make it through the winter because what they do is grow that feed, store it, feed, oh, and, and feed that. Uh, uh, to their animals over the, over the winter. The Foot Brook Farm, which is owned by Joey and Tony LaHoulier in Johnson, Vermont, are one of the main sources of food for that small community in Johnson. Uh, the grocery store in that town was totally flooded out, but will be reopening. 
the far, their farm was flooded too, and they had over $100,000 in losses. And what was really bad this time, they also lost a lot of their equipment. So I do thank the administration, President Biden, FEMA. Uh, I acknowledge the tremendous work that Governor Scott and his team have been doing, staying on top of this. And it's been a tremendous effort on the part of uh, Senator Sanders, who's been the leader of our delegation of three here in the United States Congress. But we've got to get that FEMA supplemental passed. While that $16 billion of FEMA's disaster relief fund is critical, the Vermont delegation, as I mentioned, are pushing for more because with what has happened, regrettably, to our colleagues in Hawaii, the hurricane in Florida has added to the challenge and the need. We need to increase FEMA's cap for hazard mitigation. We need to make small business loans forgivable. You know, if you're a small business and you've just implemented a plan to expand and you borrowed money from the bank in order to do it, you can't afford to take out more loans. So it's really essential that we make it possible for folks to get grants, these businesses that are so critical to our communities, rather than saddle our small businesses uh, with more debt. We also need to expand the USDA's emergency grant relief program for our farmers. Mr. President, even if the world has moved on for other parts of the country, Vermont still needs help. And one of the heartbreaking situations that you see, you know, we visit when there's a farm, there's a family whose home has been destroyed, a business that can't open, and do all we can to make certain the relief gets there. But if it's your home that can't, you can't get back into, if it's your business that you're not certain at all you can reopen, if it's your farm where the crops have been destroyed, there is a lot of suffering that continues and it takes an immense amount of, error, of, of courage. And what we have to do is make certain that folks who are willing to rebuild and come up from the floodwaters to do their work again, that we make certain that we do our work here. And that means getting the FEMA supplemental passed and enacted into law with the signature of President Biden. Our farmers, like the seventh generation Conant family farm, they need the support of Congress to get through the flooding. Our businesses on Main Street who hope to reopen need the support of Congress and the FEMA resources. And of course, our homeowners, including folks who have mobile homes that were washed away, they absolutely need the assistance in order to get back into a safe and secure home. So, Mr. President, my, er, my request to my colleagues is to do what all of us have done for each other when the people we represent have been the, on the receiving end of a catastrophic national, uh, natural disaster. And that's to make certain that we come to the aid of our fellow citizens, and the way we can do that is by the passage of the FEMA supplemental request. Mr. President, I yield back.